Guess what I had to do at age 25 in order to change my own future? I had to change my mind. I had to change my thinking. I had to change my philosophy. I was messed up on what was causing my problem. Once I got that straightened out, that all the stuff I blamed, the government, taxes, the marketplace, the economy, and things cost too much, negative relatives, cynical neighbors. Once I got rid of that and started going for where the real problem was, which was me telling you my life exploded into change. My bank account changed immediately. My income changed immediately. My whole life took on a whole new look and color immediately. And the early results I got from making these philosophical changes tasted so good. I've never stopped the process in that day. And I'm telling you with a little consideration of the refinement of your sale by setting a better sale, refining your philosophy. Your whole life can start to change the day on. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next month. You don't have to wait till spring. You don't have to wait till 93 to start this whole process immediately. I recommend it. Now, some people do so little thinking, they don't even have their sale up. I mean, you can imagine where they're going to wind up at the end of this week, at the end of this month, at the end of this year. Now's the chance to change, process all this information. Well, number one is velocity. And we dealt with all that, where we get ideas, personal experience, from other people's experiences. I don't want to get into all those details because we covered that the last I was. But philosophy, that's number one, my personal opinion, each person's personal philosophy. Here's the definition of success and failure. Just make this note. Here's failure, a few errors in judgment, repeated every day. Now you can automatically assume, Mr. Owen, I say, I can understand that. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. For six years, I'm with my father. I think I told the story the last time I was here. My father, 88 years old, he's never been ill, still hasn't retired. Not long ago, midnight, we're getting ready to go to bed. Build a new well, about to water, got some more acres going, he's all excited. At midnight, we're getting ready to go to bed, my father eating what he calls his midnight snack. A little bite to eat before you go to bed, don't have to go to bed hungry. And I'm watching him eat this midnight snack. Guess what he had? An apple, a few graham crackers, and a glass of grapefruit. I said, no wonder my father's so healthy. My mom taught us all those good health practices. Taught me when I'm growing up, right? I'm an only child, I've never been ill. That's a big 5-0 some time ago. My two daughters, 32, 33, never been ill. My grandkids, never been ill. Telling you, the legacy lingers on. As I watched my father have this midnight snack, suddenly occurred to me. I know that's part of it. An apple, what? A day. That's gotten to Dallas Fort Worth, right? An apple. An apple. A day. Keeps the doctor away. Good question for this intelligent audience. What if that's true? You say, well, Mr. Rohn, if that's true, that would be easy to do. Then what's the problem? It's easy not to do. It's easy not to adopt it as your own personal philosophy. Or the guy messed up the say. Guy says a Hershey bar a day. Say no, no. You've been watching too much television. It is not Hershey bar. You gotta be smarter in philosophy than to fall for the Hershey bar a day when it's an apple a day. You gotta be smarter than that. And if you make that kind of an error in judgment every day for six years, I'm telling you, it'll accumulate into disaster. Sometimes the first year you say, well, you know, I'm so healthy now. What difference is it gonna make? You gotta be smarter than that. Just because disaster doesn't fall on us at the end of the first day doesn't mean disaster isn't coming. you got to be so smart that you look down the road and say, will the errors in my present judgment of philosophy, what's that going to cost me in one year, six years, one month, six months? I'm telling you the money cost and the health cost and the success cost is too gigantic if you'll look down the road a little ways and say, are there errors in my current judgment like an apple versus a Hershey bar? Is that just a good illustration of some of the rest of my errors in judgment? If it is, that's where I found myself at age 25. I was parked. I knew I could do more. But when my mama died, it took something out of me. When I went through a divorce, it took something out of me. When, when my best friend died, it took something out of me. I parked. And somebody said that life is like an onion. You have to peel it one layer at a time. And sometimes you cry. Life's going to happen to you when you have a dream. You're going to get slapped around. And don't take it personal. Don't ask, why did this have to happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You want to give us some names, some email addresses? And don't tell everybody. 80% don't care. And 20% glad is you. It's called life. Suck it up and move on. Get over it. It happens to everybody. Here's the other thing. As you look at your goals and look at your dreams, when you're going through some stuff, repeat out to me please when things go wrong don't go with them yes write that down when things go wrong don't go with them when you're working on a business deal you're counting on some money someone said you will get the loan and it falls through you have an event 
and the people that you thought would be there and support you, they don't come through. Or someone turns against you or you get ripped off. It's going to happen to you. It happened to me. Someone stole all my products, my database, over 180,000 names and addresses. It's not personal. It's going to happen to everybody. It does. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney had seven. He filed bankruptcy seven times and had two nervous breakdowns. It's called life. But I got a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. You've got the power in you to do that. You've got something special. You've got comeback power. When I was home, I lived in a car for three years. I made some decisions in my life, man, and threw myself off a cliff. My decision in October, uh, October 8th, 1985, I walked into a comedy club for the first time on a dare from a girl. I walked into a comedy club for the first time. Had never heard of a comedy. All my life, I wanted to be on TV. Had never heard of a comedy. October the 8th, I walked into Hilarity's Comedy Club in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. That's right outside there. I signed up for the following week because I just wanted to see what the comedians did. Man, I wanted, I was saw stand, live stand up for the first time. They had 10 acts supposed to go up, nine of them went up, 10th guy got scared and went, ran out the door. So I had signed up for the following week. The guy says, listen, we lost our 10th act. We're going to go to the phone. We're going to go to, the week from next week, if Steve Harvey's here, come on up now and try to start clapping. I was eating a chicken wing and drinking some grapefruit juice and I turned to the girl and I said, it's a dude in here, got the same name I got. She said, you the stupidest bastard I know. All right, I'm getting close to that, it's that time limit. I was hanging in there, Grand, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Grand. I, how long was I up here for? Did I get 20 in? Amen. You usually around 15, 20. So I ran up on stage. I'm doing, I don't even know what to do, but I just started talking about boxing, stuff that happened to me. The audience was hollering, laughing. They brought all 10 of us back up on stage. They had a clap off. I won the clap off. I won $50. I cried from Cuyahoga Falls to Cleveland. The girl kept saying, why are you crying? It ain't but $50. I said, no, nah, you don't understand. Way more than this is what I do. She said, what you mean this is what you do? This is just your first time. Uh, you don't understand. Something happened to me. I won every night. I went to work the next day, October 9th, 1985, and quit my job. Something to think about. Or did I like, completely lose you? Let me know. Are you with me on this, yes or no? Yes? All right, so let me show you something. Now we're going to get in 10. Get my book, by the way. It's called Max Out Your Life. I'm putting the screen up here, guys. You can get my book. Uh, I got another one coming next year. This one's good. It's like a book lit. It's like 100 pages. You can read it in a day. It's got all kinds of tactics and strategies. If you don't have the nine bucks or whatever it is, don't get it. Uh, follow me on social media. Go to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Listen to my stuff. It's good. I'm going to brag for a minute. One time. They already told you what an idiot I am. I produce the best content in the world by a mile. I'm just going to tell you. It's the most tactical, the most detailed, the most inspirational, the most real because I'm real. I've actually built something. I've actually done something. I don't come to events to sell you stuff. Sorry, I get emotional about it because I want you to win. I want you to be better. All my stuff is free. Okay? And i got a podcast you should listen to. i got a coaching program called the Arte Syndicate.com. All right. So now, now we're going to get intense. Okay. I'm a Christian man. I want to say this first. I'm a Christian man. My uh, children, I was, Max was three years old. We're in the back of the car one day and he goes, he said the F word. And my, my wife's dad was a pastor or brother's a pastor. I said, where in the world did you, he'd never heard me cuss. He said, where'd you learn the word? He goes, mama says every time somebody cuts her off, daddy. So he learned a bad word. I, my son had never heard me cuss until the story I'm about to tell you. But if I don't cuss telling you the story, it won't be real. So I'm about to say some bad words. Are you all okay with that? So yeah, because it's a real deal. It really happened. Okay. So I want to talk to you about winning now. Okay. We got the emotional part of a life. Now we need to win. Here's the deal. You got to quit playing around. Time's running out on you. I don't care how old you are. It was yesterday, brother. I was your age. I was cool, sexy, and young. Now I'm old, beat up, and eight. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you, time flies. Time flies. I'm 50 freaking years old next month. I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud. 50 years old next month. My son, I'm the type of dad, you can put that up on the screen. I'm the type of dad, man, because I was an athlete. I played college baseball. I played division one college baseball. I was a good player. I wasn't a great player. I had a catastrophic injury that formed a tumor. I started to lose part of my right leg that ended my career. It probably would have ended eventually anyways, but my career ended. So when I had a son, I did not want to be that dad. Any of you have boys in sports or girls in sports, you know that dad? You know the dad I'm talking about? 
crazy dad, the guy that thinks his five foot six inch, 240 pound son's gonna play in the NFL. You know that dude, right? You should laugh at him. That's funny as hell, right? Has no genetic chance whatsoever of ever playing professional sports, but this dude's gonna turn him into one. So when my son started playing sports, I'm just gonna be honest with you. My son is not athletically gifted. My daughter is. Bless his heart. In fact, Max is so bad when he played baseball, we for years could not figure out whether this poor kid was left or right handed. And I'm dead serious when I tell you this. To this day, I still don't know. He eats right handed, he right left handed, he can't throw or catch. You cannot play catch with a baseball with my son because he will probably get hit in the face. To this day, he's just not athletic. We put him in every sport, football, flag football, he was the kid who blocked. You know which kids block, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about. Basketball, no bueno. He went an entire season and did not score a basket, okay? Baseball, which was my sport, I got on the best hitting coaches on the planet. We just called him a switch hitter because this we had no idea. So finally he stops playing sports. I'm like, you know what? But he's a hard worker. He's watched his dad work hard. Golf. And then of course when he started playing golf, left or right handed, I had no idea. Still probably not sure. My son started playing in tournaments. We moved out to the desert. This is a picture of us. And I was this dad. I used to tell Max, hey Max, you know daddy loves you whether you finish first or last. You ever say that to your kids? I can't love you more if you win. My son started to take that stuff very seriously. And so we would go out and where we lived, I moved where a bunch of professional golfers live and their son. And so the tour my son played on, your dad caddied for you. Don't you picture, you're walking around, I'm carrying his bag, four or five hours. I'd show up to the golf course, tattoos, Adidas pants on, tennis shoes, tank top. My kids got some used set of golf clubs from Roger Dunn. Rag them up in little outfit, you can see it right there. That's not me, that's me and him playing golf right there. And then we play against these kids. Dad played on the PGA Tour. He's got this perfect outfit that identically matches his son. Best golf clubs, best instructors in the world. Everybody we played with were pros. And so my son, we would play. My son's such a good boy. I always wanted him to be happy for everybody else. My son played on this tour. I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. He played 32 tournaments. He put, finished last in 32 tournaments. Not third or fifth or 18th. Last in 32 tournaments. And we had a good time. We get in the car and say, hey, have some fun, buddy. He shot 104. Winner shot 68. Yeah, fun, buddy. Hey, Dad, that was awesome just got to be with my daddy today. And I'm like, good, I'm glad you had fun. Every week we would do this. Walk around, finish last, finish last, finish last. Did you have fun? Don't worry about it. My son's such a good kid. He'd top his first drive into a lake. You hit a good drive. Nice shot, Brian. Such a good shot. Everyone loved Max. He'd make a guy makes a big putt. Max was more excited for you when you made a big putt than you were that you made a big putt. Not a competitive bone in his body. And I thought it was great. I was building his self-esteem, building his self-confidence. He's not going to play professional golf anyways. And we would go week after week after week. And I thought I was, you know, being a good dad. And then this happened. He's warming up that day. See what he's wearing there? It's a good golf swing. He's in a good position. Max's problem wasn't his swing. Max's problem was up here. Max's problem was up here. He didn't believe in himself. He didn't want to compete. He didn't really want to get after it. And so we played nine holes that day. Two professional guys are in our group. And here comes the bad news. We're at the turn. There's about a hundred yard walk between the ninth and tenth hole. And on this tour, the kids get a box lunch at the tour turn. We're playing with two dudes. The first dad has won on the PGA Tour and his dad won on the PGA Tour. And now we're we're playing with his son. There's three generations. The other guy's a good player, and his dad played on tour too. And one of the dads says, we're walking, having a good time. Max is 11 back, 11 out of first place after nine holes. And we get to the turn, and you have to go get some sandwiches, but they got to go hit. And one of the dads turns and says, hey, boys, you guys go ahead up there. We'll walk up to the deal. Max is out of it. He'll go grab your lunch for you. And Max goes, yeah, I'll get it. And he starts to walk. I said, stop. I said, what the fuck did you just say to my son? Sorry, to be real with you. So what the fuck did you just say? I said, we don't get your lunch, dude. I don't know who the hell you think you're talking to. You you don't ever speak to my boy that way. I said, tell you what we're gonna do. You guys go up to the tee box, I'll go get the lunch. Max, you stay right here right now. Remember, this is I love you, son. Never heard me cuss in his life. Now he's like, good, right? I got I'm I'm, I'm you know, I got a tank top on. <laughs> Max is 10 years old. I said, get over here. We're gonna fucking win today. He goes, what dad? Okay, what dad? What about but you love me with her? I go, that's out the window! We're gonna fucking win today! No one speaks to us like that! You hear me? And I'm shaking him. But I'm also anchoring it. Big emotional state and I'm touching. I said, we're gonna fucking win today. Well, dad, I don't. He said, Max, listen to me. Here's what we're gonna do. First, we're changing shirts. We're putting on your winning shirt. He had another shirt in his golf bag. I changed his identity physically. I said, you throw this jersey on. I said, come here. We're gonna win today. Here's what we're gonna do. No practice swings. Dad, I've never done this. We didn't line up putts. I let him pick his club. I said, I'm gonna pick every club you hit. You're gonna pick every club you hit. No practice swings. You execute. You got a beautiful swing, Max. You got a better swing than all of these guys out here. You're more flexible. You can hit it longer than most of them. We're gonna win. Now remember, he's 11 back with nine holes. I said, we're gonna win. It's okay, daddy. It's okay. I said, now listen, you go up to the tee, you hit the three wood. Don't hit that driver. He sprays this driver. I said, you hit that three wood. I'm shaking. Look at this. You think I'm kidding? You see that? I said, you hit that three wood. No practice swing. You get up there and smooth it, Max. He's like, okay, dad. And I watch him, my little boy. My heart's breaking because I've never made him compete before. And I'm watching him walk. Max walk like this. All the way to the tee box. I'm getting the sandwich. I'm gonna beat this dad who said my kid, right? <laughs> 
right? I'm the nice guy. I'm the Christian guy. I'm the, we're going to have bubbles and gum when we're done here. And I watch Max from a distance walk up, grabs his through. Here's how bad Max was. You ever watch any of the no golf? My son can't even tee the ball. I'll never forget this. You know, normal players like they tee it up, they get behind it. Max was always like, you know, trying to get the tee, the ball to balance on the tee. That uncoordinated. Finally gets the ball to balance on the tee. He comes back, no practice swing. Whoosh, whoosh. Right down the pooper, right down the middle. And I see it, I'm like, we're in business. I kind of watch Max, he kind of hits me, kind of kind of flips his club a little bit from a distance. I'm like, all right, I get up there, I go, give me the club, man. I said, nice shot. And I'm walking down, I said, we're going to win today, Max. We're going to win today, Max. We're going to win today, Max. That was awesome. You smoked it. You're three woods longer than their freaking driver. He gets up there, I said, okay, I've never done this. Now I'm getting specific in detail. Before it's like, hey, hit a good shot. Now I'm like, look, hit this eight iron. I want it 10 feet left of the hole. He goes, okay, dad. I said, no practice swing. Sure enough, he gets up, hits it about 20 feet left of the hole. We got a 20 footer now for a birdie. This kid hasn't made a birdie in his life. Right? We get to the green, everybody marks their ball. Normally, what's Max do? He walks up to the ball, doesn't mark it, putts, 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 picks it up. Good putt, Brian. Nice birdie. Right? So he gets up to the green. I said, hey, he gets ready to putt it. I go, you didn't even line it up. I said, take a look at the putt. He doesn't even know what he's looking at. Right? He's like, okay, dad, yeah, all right, I got you. Okay. Walks on the other side, can walk around it, just like a pro, walks around it. He's like, okay, dad, God's so good, you guys. He delivers the moment when you need it. Max gets over the putt. He goes, dad, I think it's about two feet left. Right. I don't know either, Max. Yeah, that sounds good, dude. Pull the front back. Range birdie. Okay. Both those guys, wait, both those guys make bogey. Now we're nine back. This is where God comes in. Next hole, I'm like, you know what? Smash the driver, Max. Right? Smash the driver, buddy. He's like, all right. I said, you got this. Bam! Smokes the driver. All three boys smoke the driver. Except now I want something. Max starts walking in front of me. Now he's walking like this down there. Totally different human being. I'm like, oh, he walks like me now. He's walking like his dad, right? We get down there to par five. He's got 225 yards in. 10 years old, nine or 10 years old. He's got 225 yards. Both these other boys lay up. I said, Max, we got to make up some ground. Smash this three wood on the green. He kind of looks at me. I said, hit it. No practice swing. There's a lake in front of the green. There's a block wall with rocks on it in front. Max walks up. Good shot. Like, Jesus, please give this boy a break. Please, Lord, please. And it comes down, hits the wall, right up in the air. And I kind of do this, and Max goes, yeah, daddy. And I go, what? It hit the wall, went forward, and rolled to about six feet away from the hole. That's God. That ain't me, right? That's God. I'm like, all right. Little Ian drops one in the lake. Little Mikey drops one in the lake. We're sitting on the green with an eagle putt. I'm like, Max, knock this sucker in. Take a look at it, walk it off. Same bull crap. He doesn't look at you. He looks around, looks at, gets up, makes an eagle. We go birdie eagle with the new shirt on. Birdie eagle, right? Now Max is like, Dad, we're going to win this thing. I'm like, we are, buddy. We're going to win. And we get all the way to 18. He's down one. We've never even been in the tournament. We've never even talked about this crap before. He's down one going at 18. There's a lake in front of the green again. I said, smash the driver, Max. It's you and Ian. Ian was the other boy left. Smash the thing, man. Max is walking around like, I own this place now, right? Kind of one of these deals. I got it, Dad. I got it. Sure enough, bangs it down the middle. They're both about eight feet away from each other. And I hear Ian's dad say, don't hit it in Lake. I go, Max, Lake. <laughs> He's gonna hit it in the lake. My son's like, this language, Dad. I'm like, don't, just today, right? <laughs> right? Just today. And so, sure enough, Ian dunks it in the lake. I'm like, Max, this smoothie. Put a smoothie on it, buddy. Hit this eight iron ten feet. We're getting the hell out of here. We're going to win this thing. And he does. He hits it about 15 feet left, except Ian comes up with the clutchest shot ever and hits his next one to about that close, taps in. So Max makes the putt. He wins. If he two putts, we tie and go to a playoff. Here's where I, I'm stupid. I go, hey, it's a quick putt. Don't hit this thing too far past the hole. We two putt, we go to a playoff. You don't say that. Thank you. My son goes, I swear to you on my children. Okay, my son goes, Dad, I'm going to make it. I go, okay, then make it. Yeah! He jumps on, ah, Dad! There's nobody there. There's no crowd. I'm picking him up right on the other dads are like, our kids win every week. This is no I'm like, this is the greatest moment of my damn life. You know, yeah! And Max couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe he won, and it changed his life. Let me show you something. There he is with his medal after he won. Look at that little face. Now he's got his new shirt on, right? Right? And I know... I know you look at that picture, you're like, he still stands like an unathletic dude. I know, but still, look at that. That changed his life. This is now me and him playing father-sons. Uh, you can look at that one. What's that say right there? My let, somewhere on there, 64. That's a pretty good story shot that day. And that's when he's about 14. That's me and him now playing at Cabo. He's a little bit bigger than his dad now. By the way, he's lost 80 pounds since that picture. He got fit, and this is him signing his college scholarship to go play golf, right? So, why do I tell you that, right? Isn't that cool? That's awful. All right. All right. I got chill. Why do I tell you that? Because that day we decided to stop playing golf and we decided to start winning at golf.
and color immediately and the early result I got biological challenge good I have never stopped the process from the dead day and I am telling with a little conservation of refilling on your cell by setting a better cell refilling your biology your whole life can start to change the day on you don't have to wait till tomorrow have to wait till next month you don't have to wait still separate don't have to wait still 93 you can start the whole process immediately i recommended it now some much people do little thinking they don't even have their cell up i immediately you can imitation where they are going to wing up this moment at the end of year change the process all this information number of biology and we dealt with all that well idea personal experience from their other people and experiment and i don't want to get into all those details because we covered that last time that number one my personal opinion is personal philosophy there the definite success and failure just here failure a few euro juices uh, repleted every day now we can automatically assume my own i so i can into that few error in jugulation reflection every day for six year i am with father i think i told this story that time i was here father 80 years old and i never still related it long time ago thank you for watching like share and subscribe